My first encounter with EMF was probably seven or eight years ago now. I was sleeping next to my router. Literally two to three feet away from my head was the router and I had insomnia, but I couldn't figure out what it was. Me being the open-minded thinker I was, I started Googling, can routers cause insomnia? And then I discovered EMF radiation. At the time, I didn't really think much of it. I moved the router away from my bed and I started sleeping better. So that thought of EMF kind of eclipsed my mind after I started sleeping fine again. It wasn't really worrying me. So I'm going to go over what EMFs do in the body, the levels of various EMF devices through the house. But for the most part, this is going to be a starting point and then you guys can do further research on your own. So ion channels and membranes that transport calcium in the body rely on voltage and they're overactivated as a consequence of energy provided by EMFs. This particular paper that I'm going to quote specifies some potential issues with this, but these channels do a lot in the body. So overactivation of these can cause a lot of problems depending on the EMF exposure. And on Wikipedia, what a voltage gated calcium channel is, is the activation of particular voltage gated calcium channels allow calcium to rush into the cells, which depending on the cell type results in activation of calcium sensitive potassium channels, muscular contraction, excitation of neurons, upregulation of gene expression, or release of hormones or neurotransmitters. So this can be anything from sleep disturbance to stress hormones, headaches, insomnia, sperm abnormality, calcium metabolism in heart cells can be altered. And this is at fairly low levels. So before we go over what levels occur in household devices, we have to understand units. And I have two devices here today. This device measures EMF in microwatts per meter squared. This device measures EMF in milliwatts per meter squared. Uh, the only thing you really have to know is that this is 1000 times what this is. So if this measures 1000, this will measure one. To go over microwatts first, the smaller measurement, levels as low as 50 can cause sleep disturbances from chronic exposure, 60 to 100, increased stress hormones, higher adrenaline levels, as we go from 30 to 200, headache, irritation, concentration, behavior problems, fatigue, headaches, sleeping problems. So we have generally overlapping problems with sleep, memory, concentration, stress hormones at these, what I would consider relatively low levels of EMF exposure. Now, this is anywhere from 50 to four to 500 microwatts per meter square. Once we get higher, from 10,000 up, we see cancer rates get influenced, memory function, motor skills, there's retarded learning in children, nervous and immune system problems, and then 50,000 plus microwatts, we see DNA damage. Now, we're gonna move on to milliwatts, but 125 milliwatts is 125,000 microwatts. So keep in mind, 125 milliwatts causes calcium efflux in cells, stress response in cells. At 200 milliwatts, serum cortisol can lower up to 25% in just a matter of hours. Uh, 282 uh, free radicals in rat cells, 375 affected the immune system, 450 lower testosterone in mice. At 500 milliwatts, there was blood brain barrier leakage and a reduction in REM sleep. At 1,000, there are changes in immune system function, a 24% drop in testosterone after six hours, and leakage of the blood-brain barrier. At 5,000, there are changes in intercellular calcium in intestinal cells, and a 25% drop in testosterone and insulin. And you know, most household devices don't come anywhere near these levels besides a microwave when it's running. So what we're going to do is go to various devices throughout the house, show how distance affects the EMF radiation, and then you guys can correlate the numbers to things you might be concerned about. And of course, we should start with a cell phone, right? So I have my cell phone in my pocket on airplane mode. It's going a little wacky because I'm near the microwave, but that's fine. So let's move over here away from the microwave. The other problem is I have a landline phone right here that's gonna cause some signals too, so 
So starting with EMF levels of cell phones, I'm using the milliwatt meter because the microwatt doesn't go high enough. Uh, microwatts only goes up to 2000 and this measures way over that. So a cell phone, when it's not on airplane mode, pulses pretty high every 10 to 15 seconds. So it pulses up to two milliwatts when it's not in use every 10 seconds or so. And when it is in a phone call, it goes up much higher. But if we have the phone just a few feet away from us, it, it dissipates greatly. This is the thing about EMF. When it's right next to you, the levels are very high, but as you step even a few feet away from it, the signal dissipates greatly. And I mean, things like aluminum foil, even just one sheet of it can almost completely block EMF signals. So the thing with cell phones is that we can put them on airplane mode, we can turn them off, we could talk on speakerphone, keep them fairly far away from our head, but there are definitely other devices around our house we want to be mindful of. So here is a landline phone. This is my microwatts meter. And right now it's measuring around 1000 microwatts per meter squared. Now it just went up to 1700. And when I get within two feet of this, the meter doesn't go high enough. So since this is 1,000 times this smaller meter, when this measures 1,000, this is gonna measure around one. But when we get too close, this zeroes out because it, it doesn't go high enough. It only goes up to 2,000 microwatts. So if the measurement is above 2,000 microwatts per meter squared, we have to use this. When we're right up next to the landline phone, this pulses up to, and this is touching it, this is 65 milliwatts per meter squared. So pretty high levels. Now, I'm curious what the levels would be if you were on a phone call. So the level goes up to three milliwatts per meter squared. It's going higher, around three. So yeah, the base of this phone stand is around 60 milliwatts, and then when you're on the actual phone itself is around three milliwatts, which is the equivalent to either 60,000 microwatts or 3,000 microwatts. So definitely something to be mindful of if you can avoid having one of these in your house by all means, um, or if you are using the phone, try to keep it on speakerphone as far away from your head as possible. So let's take a look at the microwave. And microwaves are probably the worst device you could actually have in your house in regards to EMF. Now, I don't use the microwave, but my family does. Even when the microwave is off, we have around 300 microwatts per meter squared. Now, I'm not gonna bother with that meter because it is way too low when I turn this thing on. So, right now, we are measuring around point two five milliwatts per meter squared, which is correct, as we were measuring around 250 on the, the microwatts. But when we turn this on, this is gonna go haywire. 1,500, 1,500 microwatts per meter squared. Nothing in this house, 1,700, so very, very high levels. Like if you slept next to a microwave for six hours, your testosterone would drop by 25%. It's, it's pretty insane, but that's right up next to the microwave. Let's actually see how it dissipates as we step away from the microwave. So although we have incredibly high levels in, next to the microwave at 1500, you know, if we step about 10 feet away from the microwave, it's pulsing between 250 and 500 milliwatts per meter squared. So still, very high levels of EMF, especially compared to other things in the house, but it's far less than standing right next to the microwave, that's for certain. Uh, but you know, you don't want to use a microwave in general, let alone be standing next to one. I'm going to go up to my parents' room right now because the microwave is actually behind the wall of their headboard. And there's some EMF coming through the wall where the microwave is. So we're going to measure it with the microwave off and then we're going to turn the microwave on and see what the levels are. Right next to my father's end table, we measure around 0 0.05 milliwatts per meter squared, which is the equivalent of about 50 microwatts. 
but I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna turn on the microwave, and then we're gonna come back up and take it again. So I turn the microwave on, and the levels are actually pretty high in here. They're going up to 150 milliwatts per meter squared, up to 200. So microwave, definitely no go, incredibly high levels of VMF. Definitely the most dangerous device, although exposure is short term. You know, my mother literally would microwave her food five or six times at once at dinner. So maybe that's why her brain is half missing. So here I have a digital meter. Now there's analog meters, there's digital meters, and there's smart meters. Smart meters emit much higher levels of EMF than digital meters, but digital meters still emit some EMF. The old school analog meters don't emit anything at all. The reason I have it wrapped in aluminum foil is to divert the signal, and this is very effective. Uh, normally I would have done a better job with some aluminum mesh, made it look nicer, but this meter is going to be replaced uh, tomorrow actually. So the problem with detecting EMF levels from these meters is that they only give off a signal every 30 seconds or so. So if you come to this meter and you're trying to test the EMF levels and nothing's coming up, you have to wait a little while. On this meter, it, it was too high. This is measuring in microwatts. It only goes up to 2000 microwatts. This meter measured at 12, which means that it's around 12,000 microwatts or 12 milliwatts per meter squared. So we're gonna just test the meter one more time. So we got another reading, it's 52 milliwatts per meter squared or 50,000 microwatts per meter squared. Much higher than the previous reading. We just got another reading of 38, and now we just got a reading of 45. So pretty high levels of EMF. You know, 40, 50,000 microwatts would definitely cause issues for most people, definitely disturb sleep with a pulsating pattern. So I just got a pulse of 1,800 microwatts or 1.8 milliwatts per meter squared. So the aluminum foil is clearly doing an excellent job of lowering the signal even a few inches away. But as we saw when we went inside the aluminum foil, the signal was still incredibly high. Although I've blocked almost the entirety of the EMF being emitted by using the aluminum foil to diverge the signal, the problem is the back of the smart meter still emits some EMF wavelengths. Now, you guys can see I have some aluminum mesh stapled and taped to the wall here, as well as where the wires go into the back of the meter. So if we try to test for pulsing over here, it's gonna be very low because I have the screen up now. So we are still getting some you know, some levels of EMF pulsing here. By no means are they incredibly high, but the reason this mesh screen is here is because there's a bedroom right above the garage where I'm standing. Okay, so we're gonna go upstairs to the bedroom and we're gonna see what the EMF is pulsing like up there. So before I shielded the meter, the level of pulsing of the EMF was certainly high enough to cause sleep irregularities, heart palpitations, brain fog, memory loss, all of the symptoms that people suffer from EMF overexposure because it was pulsating at a very high amount at pretty consistent frequencies every 30 seconds. Now, once I shielded it, the levels are still pulsing, but they're a fraction of what they were. I would say they're one to 5% of what the levels were. And when the guy comes to change the meter tomorrow, I am very curious to see if this new meter is going to pulse out anything, and if it doesn't, how my sleep is going to be affected over the next few weeks. All right guys, so the Con Ed guy came today, installed the new meter. It actually looks exactly the same as the other one, but this one allegedly does not emit a signal. So I did just get a pulse from this, but the level was 25, microwatts per meter squared and before that it was well over 2000 okay so now let's test it from like five feet away the levels are 
abysmally low compared to the other meter that we had. Literally, maybe 0.1% of what they were. So, I've been testing this new meter for the past hour or so, and it seems like it caps out around 30 microwatts per meter squared. These levels are actually a fraction of what was pulsating in my bedroom. My bedroom was pulsing up to 90 microwatts per meter squared, sometimes 100 microwatts per meter squared. So it's, uh, it's definitely safe to say this has drastically reduced the uh, emission. So I'm assuming when I go upstairs to the bedroom that the levels aren't going to really measure at all. So I've been testing levels upstairs where my sister sleeps and there is no pulsing and the levels are pretty much as low as they can get. Uh, it's funny, I actually had my cell phone on me earlier and I forgot to turn it on airplane mode. So I was like, where are these signals coming from? And I forgot I had my cell phone in my pocket. Okay, now we are in one of the bedrooms where the router is. Standing right next to the router, the router is covered in aluminum foil, and I am getting levels of around from 1 to 5 milliwatts per meter squared. But, if I take this foil off, if I take the foil off, we go from 2 milliwatts. To a hundred oh wow so it was around two milliwatts now we're pulsing up to a hundred and fifty right next to the router we're at a hundred fifty yeah so we're pulsing between a hundred fifty and a hundred which is pretty high I mean it's not anywhere near what the microwave was but pretty high levels of EMF now if we get about you know five feet away from the router it dissipates very quickly. So for most people, being about 10 feet away from your router is perfectly safe. But the interesting thing is that putting just a little bit of aluminum foil on the outside completely blocks the signal whatsoever. The only issue with covering your router in aluminum foil is that it also dissipates the Wi-Fi signal fairly significantly. So that is certainly something to keep in mind when uh, covering it. Now, you know, it reduces it by over 90%, and if we cover this a little better with maybe another layer or two of foil, it would be even more. You know, so we were at 160 milliwatts, and with the router covered in foil and the door closed, we're at like 0.1. So it's, it's really uh, interesting considering how easily you can block the EMF and how easily you can avoid it. And on the other hand, you know, how high it can be and how common devices that people use so much are an issue. So what, what should we really do about EMF? I think reducing exposure in the bedroom is, <laughs> reducing exposure in the bedroom. I'm not sure if that's the first time I've ever said that, but you know, reducing exposure where you're sleeping and throughout most of the day is important. Uh, in regards to everything we've went over, I think the cell phone is the biggest concern. People might want to be more mindful and just not keep it next to them when they sleep and maybe keep it on airplane mode for parts of the day where you don't need to use it. Obviously, things like microwaves should be avoided. No one should be using a microwave to cook food, let alone stand next to it and fry their brain. The landline phone can be avoided. Uh, the router, you know, you could relocate it throughout your house. You could cover it with foil. You can make a shield. Uh, the smart meter is something you can shield, you can get rid of. You could get an old school digital meter back. There's many precautions you can take. Uh, but one of the big issues in the future might be 5G. Uh, so when they come out with these 5G towers that are going to start blasting people with very, very high levels of EMF, uh, this is, I think, where EMF is going to actually unfold and we're going to see very, very clear signs that we should not be exposed to this, to this form of radiation. Right now, there are isolated issues and isolated issues are caused by fairly unusual circumstance. Maybe people keeping cell phones next to their heads all day, people being next to cell towers, someone sleeping next to their router, people zapping themselves with microwaves all day, maybe being next to a landline phone for long periods of time. There are several instances now where people might have issues with EMF, but when they come out with the 5G towers, and I actually disabled 5G on my router, uh, the 5G EMF signal, I don't know what it is, but it is much stronger and there needs to be more towers. So 
you know, that's definitely going to be a concern. I, I'm sure there's some testing that people are doing and they really are going to start frying people. Uh, this can lead to a plethora of problems and we see what happens in, you know, in high amounts. It literally breaks down your cells. It, it influences cell differentiation and gene expression, the two most important parts in the body. So, so I'm, I'm a very objective person. I like to be aware of things and I was very skeptical coming into the EMF thing and my brother will swear up and down that there is no proof that EMFs do anything, that they're harmful or anything, but uh, you know, you guys can do your own research on that. I will provide some links and resources in the description. Uh, big shout out to Matt, EMF minimalist. Uh, he sent me these meters to do this stuff. He helped me out with a lot of things. Um, but uh, if you guys want to check out his channel, I will put that in the comments down below. Uh, outside of that, if you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. If you guys want to go on my Amazon shop, uh, there's a bunch of stuff on there from the things I use in my day-to-day -day life to some supplements. I'm on Instagram. I am on Twitter. If you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, you can shoot me an email, frankatofano at gmail.com or reach out to me through the contact form on my website. Uh, if you have any questions on EMFs, uh, I am by no means an expert. There are plenty of resources out there. There's a new documentary I think that came out recently. I'll try to put that in the description if I remember what it is. Uh, but there's plenty of EMF videos that you can watch on YouTube that go far more in-depth than what I did here.